I'm one of those kinds of people that actually reads through these security patch notes of some of the software that I use, especially for things like my browser, because the browser is such a common target for hackers. Here, we've got some of these security patch notes for Firefox 100, but I don't always see a statement like this in patch notes. Access to bug details and links may be kept restricted until a majority of users are updated with a fix. We will also retain restrictions if the bug exists in a third-party library that other projects similarly depend on but haven't yet fixed. So this was posted on the Google Chrome blog back in late March. Now, it's possible to view additional details about this vulnerability using this link here, but only if you are on Google's list of trusted people. You would go ahead and authenticate with the Google account. You would tell them if you were trusted, and then you would get to see some additional details. Now, typically you don't see this unless the vulnerability really is truly high risk because most of the vulnerabilities that are fixed in these security patches, they're actually pretty hard to exploit. So you usually don't have to worry about low skill hackers taking advantage of them and ultimately the level of unauthorized access that's granted by the exploit usually isn't that bad. Like if we go back and look at a lot of these Firefox exploits, and I know comparing Firefox to Chrome is kind of apples to oranges, um, but a lot of these, even the ones that are rated to have a high impact, they aren't super severe. They're not allowing for things like remote code execution, for example. Um, and yeah, a lot of these, they're actually pretty difficult to exploit in the wild. But from the few details that have been published about CVE 2022-1096, we do know that it allows for remote code execution. It's not super difficult to execute. And the number of machines that are affected, basically all of the ones that are not using the latest version of Chrome or a Chromium fork like Brave or Microsoft Edge are very numerous. And from some more details that we have about the vulnerability on Google's website itself. We know that the vulnerability rests in type confusion in the V8 JavaScript and WebAssembly engine that is within Chrome, which is really where a lot of the high severity CVEs that have been found in Chrome and Chromium based browsers come from. Same deal with a security update that took place back on April 15th to patch yet another CVE for type confusion in V8. Chromium, and thus all of the browsers that are also based on Chromium, they use a pretty complicated JavaScript engine. And that's part of the reason why serious vulnerabilities like these are going to keep popping up in these browsers. There's also the fact that Google Chrome has such a huge market share and even Microsoft Edge, because Edge is Chromium at the end of the day. So many other browsers are Chromium at the end of the day, and they make up such a huge market share of browsers. And again, the browser is interacting with the scary internet. It's a very common attack vector for hackers to use. So there's gonna be so many people out there trying to exploit this very complicated engine. And that's just going to keep resulting in more and more vulnerabilities that are discovered and exploited in the wild. Now that's not to say that Chromium based browsers are inherently trash. Chrome is of course, because it's practically Google spyware, but if you've got something that's optimized for privacy, like Brave or un-Google Chromium, then that's actually a pretty decent browser that you have on your hands. And the real key to avoiding getting hacked through an exploit like this is to be conscious of what sites you are running JavaScript on. And really just what sites you're visiting in general, because a hacker is going to require you to first visit a web page that they are in control of in order to use this exploit and get that code actually running on your browser. And if you simply avoid going to sketchy websites in the first place, the likelihood that you're actually going to run into somebody that is exploiting this vulnerability is very low. But the reason that I bring up the JavaScript thing is because there's add-ons like uBlock Origin and even settings in a lot of these browsers that are built right into it that allow you to turn off JavaScript by default. Now, this is going to break a whole lot of websites because 90% of the high traffic internet sites out there are using JavaScript. 
Okay, so if you turn it off and refresh a site, then you might find that it's just not really working. But whitelisting the sites that you trust with an add-on like uBlock Origin can be another layer of protection. That way, if you do find yourself clicking on some sketchy links that one of your friends message you on Discord or something that gets sent to your email, especially don't be clicking on sketchy links that are sent to you through email. Uh, but if you do end up clicking on one of those, then JavaScript is gonna be off for that site by default. So it's another thing that you have to do, another series of clicks that you have to make in order for you to get hacked. And the more clicks that you put in the way of that, even though I know it's going to make using the internet less convenient for you, uh, but you might think to yourself during those clicks, gee, do I really want to allow this site to run JavaScript? on my browser? Do I really want to allow my machine to execute this JavaScript from this person that I don't even know? And why am I even trying to go to this site in the first place? You know what? I'm going to close it. And now I didn't get hacked. But the updates are out as mentioned in Google and Microsoft's blogs. So you can go ahead and update your browser and then you're gonna be protected against these particular vulnerabilities. Uh, chances are if you're using Chrome, your browser is already updating automatically, but if it's not, or if you're unsure, if you just want that peace of mind to know that you're not uh, vulnerable to this serious zero day vulnerability, just go up and uh, click on about Chromium. And then you can look at your version number right here, 101 or later, then you are good. And once you're up to date, make sure that you encourage other people to update their browsers as well. And hopefully, once the majority of people have actually updated their browsers, then we're going to be able to get more details about this because that's what Google says that they're putting out on a hold for until a majority of users are updated with a fix. From the perspective of someone that has an interest in cybersecurity, it would be nice to see a full write-up of how exactly this exploit is pulled off. Apparently, it's very easy to do, and the first type of confusion exploit like I mentioned earlier, allows for remote code execution. That can allow you to run other malware and fully compromise a device. So it'd be cool to take a look at. Make sure you update your browser. Like and comment, tag the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.